Hi, my name is Gabriel Vidal and I'm an undergraduate uh, research assistant at the Midlars Lab studying Nidarian immunity. The title of my experiment is using gene co-expression networks to identify genes associated with susceptibility and resistance to stony coral tissue loss disease. So one of the diseases we study at the Midlars Lab is stony coral tissue loss disease, Skittle D, which is a highly lethal and fast spreading coral disease endemic to the Caribbean. It was first discovered in 2014 and has since been wreaking havoc on coral ecosystems. The etiology of Skittle D is not yet fully understood and its elucidation is of great interest in this field. So in this study, we're trying to figure out why some species of corals are more vulnerable than other species and we're trying to figure out which genes are responsible for those differences in susceptibility. So to do so, we use a number of bioinformatics tools and methods, which I'll outline briefly. But first I'd like to give some background on the raw data and how that was obtained. So prior to this experiment, uh, this lab conducted an experiment in which many coral samples from different species were exposed to Skittle D to observe the pathogenesis of the disease and phenotypic data uh, from the, that experiment was obtained, including lesion growth rate, um, which le their Skittle D um, uh, diseased corals develop these lesions, so we want to see how fast those grow. Species relative risk and gene expression data, which is what we use in this experiment. So with all that data, uh, there needed to be a way to filter it down and find connected uh, genes, and that the tool we used for that is called Weighted Gene Co-Expression Network Analysis, or WGCNA for short, which uh, identifies co-expressed gene modules, which essentially are just groups of genes that share similar expression patterns across different samples. So then we further refine those into something called hub genes, which are just the most connected genes within a module. So as you can see with figure two, uh, we have the uh, gene color, or sorry, the module color on the left, which is completely arbitrary. These colors just represent modules, and the modules are just groups of genes. So these group of genes, this green group of genes, and this tan group of genes, uh, they um, are highly correlated with a high relative risk. Um, uh, of, of infection. So uh, once we obtain the hub genes from there, um, the hub genes were further analyzed with bioinformatics tools that would kind of tell us what those connections actually are. Uh, like what what these genes, uh, what functional groups they belong to, um, and uh, what, what essentially they do, how they're connected. Um, so if we could see here there's the overall flow chart of uh, the transmission experiment, the original experiment, the WGCNA to kind of get the connected genes in groups. And then we use these tools to understand how they uh, are related to each other. And um, here we find some uh, functional uh, enrichments here of these genes. So we have RNA processing, signal sequence binding, nitrogen compound transport, and we found a few genes that were shared between these. Uh, most genes just belong to one or the other. So these were the most interesting genes. These were the most connected. And so we found nine genes from here and uh, two from a different tool called string. And we actually used those as our final genes of interest to see how they were expressed uh, using the expression data from the original transmission experiment. So here on the right hand side, we have these final genes of interest that we've kind of filtered down. We have uh, on the x-axis at the bottom, we have the different samples of coral. And up here at the top of the y -ax, uh, uh, x axis we have the species relative risk. And as we can see these genes are all expressed a lot less in corals that have a low relative risk. Um, and there are some that are more significant than others. Uh, so where does this take us? So all 11 genes analyzed in figure 4 have a relative expression that is positively correlated with species relative risk. And we believe that all of them merit further study as important targets in the etiology of Skittle D, especially KPNV1 and NCBP1, whose expression appears to be significantly lower uh, in more robust coral samples. Also, the methods that we used in uh, this experiment could be utilized with other relevant phenotypic data, including those of coral symbionts. There are many out there that believe that uh, Skittle D could be a disease of the uh, symbionts themselves, the coral symbionts, of course, being uh, necessary for healthy coral and uh, that the disease might not actually uh, target the coral itself. Uh, so um, these methods could be used to uh, yield additional target genes for future examination. Uh, so that is my experiment. Uh, thank you for listening.